with this very tool I'm about to present to you, you can take any screenshot, let's say this tweet of mine on Twitter, and in an instant without me having to design a single bit, it's turned that tweet into this beautiful looking screenshot, which I can then share on social media. Let me show you how to do it. Hey all, it's Aurelius, hope you're doing well. So you saw me take that screenshot of my Twitter tweet and this tool turned it into this beautiful looking screenshot. Now, of course, it's not limited to just taking Twitter tweets. You can take any type of screenshot and make it look beautiful. The very tool you will need to create these types of screenshots is a tool called Snapper. However, something worth mentioning is that Snapper is currently only available for Mac users only. So if you're using Windows, unfortunately it's not available, but Hopefully the developer or creator will make it available for Windows in the future. But it is somewhat in beta form. And at the current time of this recording, you can download a free copy with no watermarks. So if you go to Snapper, I'll link it in the description box below and download the beta version. But I love this tool so much and I also wanted to support and contribute back to the developer who is Tony Din on Twitter. So I went ahead and purchased myself a basic license. Now, let me give you a quick tour of Snapper and how to use it. Once you've installed Snapper, you'll see it at the top where you can take a screenshot or you can use the shortcut keys to take a screenshot. Going into preferences, you'll see more settings. Set a custom shortcut here. You can also change the location of where your screenshots are saved and a few other general settings. I'm going to change my shortcut keys to Control Option S. So I'll click that and now I'll set it. There we go. Let's go ahead and take our first screenshot. In this example, let's head to my Twitter profile so that we can take a screenshot of one of my tweets. So here I am on my Twitter profile. I'm going to scroll down and take a screenshot of one that did relatively well based on my channel. So this one's gotten about 17 likes, which is very little compared to many other Twitter uh, users, I'm sure. But what I'll do is I'll click the tweet once so that I'm given this larger version. It's got a white background. I'm on Twitter web. So depending on where you're viewing Twitter, it may look different. So something like Twitter on the desktop app may look different to this. So what I'll go ahead and do is take a screenshot by pressing my shortcut keys, which was the control option and S buttons. Now you see a crosshair. This is when we can start taking our screenshot. So I'll take from where my profile is and do take note that I'm not really adding any white space as you can see. I'll just take it right there where it ends and you'll see the magic happen with Snapper. And there you go. It's already added the white space. As you saw, I didn't take any white space around my tweet. It's already done it. And if I want to adjust the amount of white space, I can go to inset and then that'll add more white space around it. But something like that looks perfect. And in fact, you don't need to really touch anything. Uh, Snapper does a pretty good job of adding the right amount of white space. Right next to inset, you will see an option called balance. What does this mean? Well, let's go back to my Twitter profile. I'm going to take a screenshot of this again, but this time what I'm going to do is add that extra bit of white space on the right and you'll see what happens. And here it is, it's automatically removed that extra white space that I took. If you disable balance, you'll see the original screenshot that I took. So it's best to leave this on in my opinion so that you're getting the most optimal size. Some other settings you may wanna play around with depending on how you want it to look include things such as the padding. You've also got the border radius of the actual white box you see right here. So if you do not want any border radius, you can go all the way down right here. But I'll go ahead and add a bit of radius. You can also adjust the shadow. So if you do not want any shadow, you can disable it or go and add more to it. Next, you've got background. You can choose one of the defaults, including your desktop wallpaper, if that's what you like. Otherwise, choose from one of the other gradient styles that you see right here, or you can go to custom and select a plain color like so. I'll select something like red so you can see and make it really obvious. You can also go to gradient, select the first color gradient. So let's say we want this green type of gradient, select that first color, then the second color, and you'll see that there's a bit of gradient there 
and that just adds a bit more of a pop right there. I'll go back to cool. You can also upload your own image file as a background by selecting image file, then selecting and finding it on your computer. Below that, you'll see ratio. Depending on where you'll be posting, let's say on Instagram, you may wanna go with the one to one ratio, which is a square. There's also four, three and also 16, nine. Otherwise you can set a custom ratio by going here, setting the ratio like so. Below ratio, you'll see redact email addresses, or in other words, censor email addresses. So for example, if you are taking a screenshot of sales, list of sales that you've gotten, and it's got customer emails, it will automatically censor those email addresses. So obviously you do not wanna disclose that and make that public. To give an example of how it works, here's a screenshot that I just took, and you'll see that it's automatically censored it. Where it says watermark, you can add your own, Let's say you wanna put your social media handle. So I've added that in and you'll see it down below. You can share your screenshot in a number of ways. You can drag the image that you see right here to your desktop or to the platform or app that you are working with. Or you can simply go here at the top share and do a quick airdrop to let's say your phone. So I've got my phone here, I'll open it up. I'll click on airdrop, share it with myself. And here we've got the screenshot ready to go. Another cool and neat feature of Snapper is that you're able to copy text from images. Let me show you with this example. We've got this photo and I'll go ahead and take a screenshot of it. Using the crosshair, I'll go and hover over right here. Here it is and from here we can start highlighting the text right away. I'll go ahead and do a right click, copy, use my text editor. I'll do a quick paste and there you have it. We've got Melbourne public MP bar. So in that order and fashion. All right, all, and that's how to quickly and easily take beautiful looking screenshots, literally with just one click using Snapper. I'm not affiliated in any way with Snapper. I stumbled upon it on Twitter and thought it'd be a pretty cool tool to share with you all, so why not? Let me know in the comments if you'll be using Snapper. If you enjoyed this video, do give this video a thumbs up and looking forward to sharing the next video with you.